Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to episode 8 of our Space Age playthrough. We have got so much progress under our belts, but we're still not to space, and it is not the age of space. It is the Nauvis Age still. But yeah, so we researched the rocket silo that did finish, and now this just showed up on our map. <gasps> Ooh, the space map. Oh my goodness, exciting stuff. Oh wow, there's lots to look at here. So it looks like we can get to all the planets from where we are. Cool. Magnetic field, gravity, day-night cycle, pressure, evolution factor. Oh, there's our evolution. Um. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff going on here. Robot energy usage. Ooh, interesting. So that's X1. 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 Okay. Aquilo? X5. There it is. Okay, so ro robots use a lot of power on Aquilo. That makes sense. Sweet. Okay, so there's all sorts of cool stuff going on here. I'm not going to I'm not going to dive too deep on that yet. Um but add space platform. But I don't have a starter pack. You need to launch the starter pack first. Okay, that makes sense. So once you launch a starter pack, then you can add a space platform. And the starter pack is what we already got researched. It's this thing. So 60 space platform foundations, 20 steel plates, and 20 processing units. Okay. And then this is like the space platform unlock. So then we can make crushers and asteroid collectors. Interesting. So cool. All right, yeah, everything till now was the tutorial, exactly. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna automate some of the things that need red circuits. Oh, I need stone brick for these. I always forget about that. Uh, um, okay, so you need a million gears. Hmm. We'll do this. And then, wait, where did my red circuits go? Oh, they're over here. I'm not digging the yellow of these night vision goggles. It's like actively not, I don't like it. Um. I don't know if they get better with higher quality, but I actually am considering just taking them out because the old version was kind of gray, like it would decolor things on your screen a little bit, but I think this new version is worse. So I can't say I'm a fan of that. All right, so there's everything for robo ports. That's done, and then we need to bring stone down here, smelt it up. Maybe we smelt it right here. Hmm. Not really space. that gotta fit the spaghetti in somehow you know guys it's just how it works perfect 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 all right then we do this and then we do this Ta -da. look at that match made in heaven all right now these should be didn't I craft a bunch? Yeah, passive provider chests. So that way we can get everything accessible by our logistics bots. Once we have a robo network, which might as well start here. And we can get that going. Oh man, I'm stuck on pipes because squeak through. <sighs> I long for the day when we will get to play with Squeak Through again, but that day is not today. It is not this day. 
Alright, we really need more steel, don't we? Maybe I should... Maybe I should add another set of those. Might as well. So we'll add another set of furnaces for making steel, and then that will consume up to a full red belt of iron. I think. Assuming I did the math right. And then we'll get rid of all these. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I need more uh, power poles. And those are... Where did I leave those things? Down here. And then I think what we'll do in this episode is we'll get rails set up. Because I'm going to need a lot more steel and a lot more copper for low density structure. Because that stuff is expansive. Look at that. 20 copper plate each. It's absurd. Just absurd. So... We're going to need a lot. How many do I have right now? I've got 20... F oh, I only have half. Oh, okay. Jeez. Am I really just going to... No, I think we're going to switch to electric smelting before I need double that. We'll just go for 12 more. All right, we'll start with this. Okay, that should do it, I think. There's six more. So now I have 30. Wait, that's not what I wanted to do. Crap. I want to have 36. There we go. This is what I thought I was doing, but it's 12 because there's six more over there, so. There's just a lot. A lot going on here. Alright, and I didn't grab enough. But otherwise, that should be it. And that'll be three-fourths of a red belt. Mm. Oh, I thought that was an attack. You're not getting attacked. Not yet, anyway. So the pollution cloud threatens, threatens to get me attacked down there, and probably that one soon enough. Is that an expansion? I feel like I killed one right around here. That might be an expansion. How close to rockets are we? We are researched on rockets, but we're still pretty far away from actually launching one. Um, I haven't set up production of any of the parts I would need, and they're also quite expensive. So we're still fairly far away from that. Okay. Now, this is looking like it's got a yellow belt on it somewhere, so what's going on here? Aha, we are yellow belt. Locked. There we go. So now we're certainly limited on iron ore. That is the problem. So that means it's time for trains, baby. Ditch. Some more transport belts. And we're going to set up our first little train network. It's going to be real simple. It's going to be point to point. A one, two train. Uh oh. Yikes. Okay. What? Where did the attack come from? According to this, there's no bases over here. Maybe a new one spawned inside of this? This chunk seems to be eating pollution pretty fast. That might be sus. Um, so there might be biters in that chunk. That's what I'm going to go investigate. Uh, but yeah, we need more rails. Should be enough. And I have turrets. I have ammo. So we should be okay. 
The expansion party killed the two turrets? Maybe. That was pretty close to the base, though. The two turrets that died were, like, right around here. So I don't... That was a little closer. But we should probably put another radar up here just to help scan all the chunks anyway. Alright, get you built. Get some ammo in you. Throw a few more turrets there for good measure. And then... Where am I going? Straight north. I think there's a biter base. Basically. It would line up with where the attack came from. Let's ignore those. Come on, guys. Hurry up. Hurry up now. <laughs> yup. Look at that. I see red. So this is where the attack came from. Okay, so turrets. Turrets at the ready. Bring it on, kids. Are these big biters? 857 now? No, it's just medium biters still. Ah! More ammo. I probably should do military science. My, my gun turrets are not really going to be able to handle big turrets when we get there. So that's maybe something I should consider. It's not that hard to automate. Military Psy, um, so we'll do that, but first let's get a uh, little outpost set up over here while we're here. And maybe kill this biter base over here. Yeah, I don't think I can do another damage tech, right? Yeah, I need I need military first. Then I can do four more or three more. Two more because of military, and then one more after that because of military. Plus chemical. Uh, really don't have the right equipment for this. But turrets are pretty good equipment. Bases are getting tankier. They got like 800 health. Is quality ammo useful? Uh, I believe it is, yeah. It shows that it would do more damage. So, certainly not uh, cost efficient. In a base where I was like defending the walls with thousands and thousands of ammo, then I could probably make enough uncommon ammo for my own personal supplies. But I'm not making anywhere near enough ammo for me to have enough you know, uncommon ammo. Yeah, Vulcanus would be a place where that would make a lot of sense. Gotta get that DPS going. Alright, let's do this the easy way. Those little rock poops. Alright. Clear out a little bit more free sp Oh no! I ran out. Okay, so we're gonna need a rail. Come on guys, hurry up. Am I doing a perimeter wall at some point? Maybe. Um Probably not. Maybe like late, late game when we just have an absurd amount of bots and we can kind of build whatever we want all across the map and not care about it. And we can just super force build over cliffs and trees and water and everything else. But um, 
I'll probably just keep killing bases that are in the pollution cloud for a while. But at some point I might need a perimeter. So let's do this. God, I can't stand this new night vision. It is really like, I really don't like it. Um, that'll, that might be the kind of mod. I know I'm playing unmodded, but that might be the kind of thing that I get before the end of this run. Cause I really do not like the yellow. I liked the old colorless far better. Now I forget, are there upgrades to night vision or is that it? Nope, that's literally it. I wonder if quality will change that at all. Yeah, exactly, Heatzor. I completely forgot about blueprinting things now that I have bots. Um, so what I need to do... Oh wait, this is missing a belt. I need to blueprint this. Okay, that's got everything. And then we throw it in here, and then we need to snap relative height of 8. And then that'll overlap the power poles with each other. Yeah, legendary power armor is going to be great. There was another sus pollution square. Is it this one? Uh, I think that's just trees. It's when it disappears, like, immediately. Is it this one? No. No, that's not. Because cause trees aren't vacuums for pollution. They just make it dissipate faster. This one. This is biters. This is biters. If that's what you guys are talking about, that's for sure biters. 100% <laughs> biters. Um... Yeah, I'll do I'll do a feedback. Night vision is too yellow. The new night vision goggles are extremely yellow and for my eyes it's very distaste dis tasteful. I preferred the old version which was simply more gray. Now, I, I do not know if quality does affect night vision goggles or not. There's nothing marked to imply it would. But if it would make night vision more true to real colors, that could be nice. All right. Hey, Shablamazam, Sh Sham, Shambalazam. There we go. Yeah, Thomas, a selectable color. Um, yes, pollution ESP. Yeah, we can telepathically know where all pollution is. We'll just assume that we have some sort of radar HUD that somehow is better than our actual radars at knowing where things are. It certainly is interesting. Um, but yeah, welcome Shambalazam. Welcome, welcome. So our rails are gonna be super simple here, but let's, oh my goodness. Oh, it's so weird. I can go in all the directions. Look at this. That's a valid direction. We could just go that way forever. Oh, that's so, ugh. I don't know if I like it. It's scary. It's scary to not be at a 45 degree angle. What is happening? What is happening? All right, we're gonna go at 45 degree angles just because just the new angles scare me. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be a super simple train. I hope this is, this might not be long enough for a train stop. Um, I think I'm just gonna do a one, two, one even. So it's just point to point. So I guess I need train stops. I never automated train stops. 
You solid it right and left, but you get east and west mixed up. Yeah, I get that. I'd say I'd, I'd try to give you some trick, but the truth is eventually brains get so locked in to having things mixed up that I don't know if there's a trick in the world that will help. The reason I say this is because I, a math teacher who has done an absurd amount of small number arithmetic problems over the course of his life, still don't know what eight times seven is. I have to think really hard before I know whether it's 56 or 54. And I know it's one of the two, but I don't know which one it is. Even right now, like I'm choosing to not think about it and I can't tell you. So that being said, there are certain things that just get mixed up in your head. And I don't know, like, like East versus West in the, you know, is what I'm referring to. And it's like, at some point, I don't know if you can fix it. Your brain might just be broken forever and you'll never know East versus West. You just have to give up on it. <laughs> you just got to give up on it. All right. So we will load. Uh, this is where, uh, sorry, bulk inserters would be nice. I haven't automated those yet. So we're going to have to go with kind of slow. So maybe I want. Yeah, this is. This is the new base. Where did it go? The one that was eating pollution. Did the pollution get too strong and it's not able to eat it anymore? Maybe. It's somewhere around there. Yeah, as far as the NESW going clockwise thing, there's a lot of tricks for that. I assume that wouldn't help at this point. Never eat soggy waffles. Uh, never eat soggy worms. Never eat slimy worms. Uh, there's... There's a lot. And yes, I'm sure there are many that involve a lot of profanity as well. <laughs> but what if I just go to the map view and I just say, screw it? How's that gonna work out for me? Can we wiggle our way home? Sure seems like it. You remember that it's five, six, seven, eight. Hey, Lore, I think I've said this exact mental problem I have before, and I think you've told me that exact thing, and clearly it didn't stick, even though I think it's very clever. Again, with the, like, the tricks only work if you commit the proper amount of time to actually learning them, which, as adults, we probably just don't tend to do. Yeah, look at these little squiggly spaghetti rails. I hate it. Like, look at this right here. I can't, I can't tell if I like that or I hate it, but it's something. It's certainly something. <laughs> Glam, you like the wiggles? I can't decide if I like it or not. I think I, I'm wishing there would be a right angles and orthogonal, like cardinal direction only mode that you could like hold an extra modifier button and it would only do 90 degree turns and left, right, up, down, you know, northeast, southwest type turns. Um, do the wiggles impact cruising speed? I don't actually know. That's a good question. Does anyone know? Does Do trains slow down on turns? Or do they just jam full speed through? Because if trains do slow down on turns, that actually would be a gameplay reason that the wiggles are bad or less good. <laughs> there is, it's blueprints. Yeah, but that's not the rail planner. The rail planner is a special thing whose whole purpose is to not have to use a blueprint or something. Riff, you're looking forward to recreating all your rail blueprints. Yeah, exactly. I, I love that. I feel like one thing that Space Age is doing is it's kind of forcing everybody to like restart sort of and rethink and recreate from the ground up all their bases, all their blueprints, all their rails. I don't know. It feels like a fresh start, kind of like how games as a service games get new seasons, you know, like season five of Diablo three or whatever. I feel like Factorio is finally getting its like fresh start game where it's like everybody is kind of on equal footing again. Even though, the, yeah, people have been playing forever 
will have a big advantage in understanding what's going on. They're still feeling like a kid again. Like I feel like a newbie again, thinking about quality and thinking about setting recipes on an assembler and I don't know. It's cool. It's really cool. They should re reset everybody's blueprint books once a year. Oh my God. There are a lot of reasons that wouldn't work, uh, but that is an idea. <laughs> uh, imagine, imagine the uproar. Oh my gosh, I can't. All right, what am I doing? I think I wanted ammo, that's what it was. Cause I wanna go take care of that nest. <sighs> Let me do military science real quick so that we can research, research that. Uh, I think I'm actually gonna do military science right here rather than really far away. Yeah, exactly. The people who have their base in a book blueprints, they they can they can spaghetti with the rest of us, you know? Oh jeez. Um Where did that pole end up? Right there. Found it. All right, so leaving ample space, we'll put military up here. Military is also a six or five. Military is only a five. Um, so we need one piercing per 10 seconds. Oh, jeez. Uh, no, sorry. One piercing per two seconds. steel we need copper what is that iron coal and stone Ugh. um okay so let's do this split off copper so copper and iron are coming up together and then coal and stone will come up together. Uh, like this. And then uh, steel is needed. Do it as an April Fool's joke. Yeah, no thanks. I do think there could be some cool, there's a cool design space for like mods that do something like that, like somehow make people feel like a fresh start. I know the community map seed is kind of already like that, but I'm wondering if there are ways to like design planets differently such that everybody kind of feels like they're on a similar, similar space. So one every three seconds. So I need three piercing round makers, is that right? Because I need... I don't know why this is so hard. I need half per second. Uh, and this makes a third. So I need two piercing round makers. Which probably means I need just a single regular. Yeah. Recipe randomizer mod. Yeah, that is an idea. You're not wrong. I don't know if it totally works, but it's something. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's just a lot of reasons you wouldn't want to use a recipe randomizer mod, but at the same time, it's not a terrible idea. Okay, that's going the wrong way. There we go. Okay, and this is one per second. Okay, so then we also need the steel going past here. Maybe there? Um, yeah. Okay, so there's piercing rounds. Um, then we need grenades, which is just iron and coal. do 
do that over here. How many do we need making nades? The same amount of nades, one half nades per second. Ooh, but these only make one eighth nades per second. So I need four nade makers. Because four eighths is one half. That should do it. God, this yellow color is going to murder me. Can't do it. Can't do it. All right, so there's nades. Piercing. Uh, let's do this. On both sides of the belt. Yada, yada, yada. Um, I'll have to move those over a little bit, I think. Honestly, it doesn't even feel that night vision-y. It's still so dark. Like, it still feels like night to me. It's like a weird yellow night instead of night vision. I don't know. I mean, it's certainly brighter than no night vision goggles, but it's so yellow. I don't know. Might need more than one red coal inserter. It's a lot of coal. Um, Is it, though, per second? Not really. It's less than one per second still. And I have stack size of two, so we're fine. It's 1.25 coal per second if the assembler was at 1.0 speed, which it's not. Uh, we could have an issue if we go to yellow assemblers and they're faster. I will, I will give you that. All right, walls. We'll figure out in a moment. You thought it was 40 coal per grenade? Oh my gosh. That sounds like something Pyanodons would do to you. Not regular. Not regular Factorio. Okay, so that's done. And then the walls. What am I doing? So walls are basically instant. Two per second by default. And we only need one per second here. So that's easy. We just need stone brick. Two and a half per second. That's going to be the issue. Two and a half per second. So I need 3.2, I need 6.4 buildings. And another half. 7, 7.8. I need eight furnaces. Are you serious? Eight furnaces? Goodness, what am I made of? Am I made of electric furnaces? That's so many. That's getting in the way of my blue science. I can't put that there. doing anything else with all this space though I have been very lax about my turret protection so I'm I'm fully expecting to lose an important part of my base sooner or later um because I'm not doing a very good job of protecting things here that I am aware of all right this. All right, there we go. And we should be pretty much golden here. Long inserters, long and short of it. And I think we're good. Why are you? Oh, I'm out of copper or no iron. Being out of iron is acceptable. That was to be expected when we ran out of iron a while ago. All right, there we go. Bring that back over to here. Nice and clean base. Look, I know you're being sarcastic. However, when we look at the base as a whole, it actually is quite clean. No! Oh, I thought that one was going down, so yeah, I screwed that up. Ah, uh, come back to me. Okay. Not the problems. Um. I'll we'll just do it like this, I guess. Wood. 
walls are an option. Yes, indeed. Why have I seen zero yet? We should have more than zero. Ah, that's why. There we go. I knew something was wrong. I'm like, look, I know we're not making grenades very fast, but I should have at least one military science by now. Okay. So, military science is done. Let's screenshot that. That feels significant. And then now we can go back to working on our rails, I think. I need more inserters and a lot more chests. You know, I should automate steel chests. That's that's an idea. That's my my idea for right now. We need them in a variety of places. It's nice to just have that done. It'll go down. All my other things are down here. Because we need these to make the other logistics chests and everything, so I think it's a good plan. <laughs> the gap in the lab. Honestly, I had forgotten about it, but I'm so glad the gap is filled. Yes. Not quite on all of them yet, but it does feel nice to have a solid row there. Um... So anyway, uh, what were we talking about? Oh, the base is cleanliness. Yeah, I was gonna zoom out and look at this. When you look at it from map view, it's quite clean as far as bases go. There's a little bit of spaghetti, you know, when you zoom in, but it's, it's zoom out, straight lines, zoom in spaghetti. That's the way that I actually love to build where like things are, there's a semblance of cleanliness in the grand scheme but you're not so worried about it that you don't let yourself have some fun, you know, and things like this. So, I like it. Now, we do need to take care of a biter base, right there. Causing some problems. So let's go take that out. Uh, I do need more inserters to work with rails. Let me grab steel chests. I'm just gonna start using those now. Get rid of these chem packs. I guess I'll put them where they go. Yeah, exactly. The key is to call every base your starter base. Oh, man. Mac is killing me. Oh, that's a big army. Holy, do you see it on the map? Okay, that's not that bad. It looked worse on the map than it actually is, and those are all small spinners, so... We might be okay. Ooh, they got... They got a kill? No, not quite. They almost got a kill. Alright, let's go take out that base. Start the damage research? That's not a bad idea. Ooh, they made a decently large base with four, four spawners and some worms. Okay, I should have grabbed more turrets. Can I copy these with the bullets in them? Does that? Or do they not copy with bullets in them? They don't. It's not like trains. Or modules, I should say. Jeez. We're at 900 health per spawner. It certainly is adding up. Spitters more consistently deal damage. Yes, that much is true. For sure. I definitely knew that from my Death World experience last week. Okay, so that's taken care of. Let's keep working on our little train situation here. 
Um, can I just handcraft enough of these? If I grab a bunch of green circuits and gears, I probably can. Because I only need uh, 48. Ugh. That's a lot of inserters. And then, of course, our poor inventory. I don't want to deconstruct all these rocks. 400 freaking stone. Goodness. Ridiculous. Should have just grabbed 50 grenades and gone for it. Fine, I'll do it myself. You guys done yet? Yeesh. Okay. Get all that out of here. Turn that off. And... And they won't try to repair it. Boom. Alright, so we need train stop. This is gonna be home. Home, iron, unload. And then train limit is one. So ain't nobody else coming over here if there's already a train on the way. This is actually convenient. I will just use coal as fuel. <laughs> Why is this water green? That's weird. I certainly couldn't have had anything to do with that. Certainly. All right, and then I need to put turrets up at the new mining station. We'll go do that when we go take power up to the mining station. I need more red belts. And then I did say if I grab enough gears and green chips, I might just be able to handcraft these guys. What am I missing? I'm just missing the proper amount of gears. Yeah. Um, we need a lot of gears. So, a rocket launcher could be a good idea. Yeah, actually, especially like an uncommon rocket launcher with more range would be super nice. Um, so I could I could set that up at some point. There's just so many little things. Like, if I could just click a button and grab a rocket launcher, I would. But you, know, you gotta set it up, and then you gotta do things, and every everything requires you to do things, and then you do more things, and then you're doing things instead of other things. And since you're not doing the other things, those aren't getting done. It's just Factorio for ya. It's always something you're not doing. Which is the fun part. Alright, so... We need 24 per station. Military technology research. All right, good enough. Good enough, and then we need to take power up there. I need maybe some more bullets, and why don't we fill up our gun turret slot here? Okay. And then we'll take big power poles. Bleeding off small amounts of quality components. Yeah, the problem with that is you need to turn all of your components into quality setups, which then slows everything down, right? Like we turned a little bit of our advanced circuit. I mean, I did four of them and that was like hours ago and I still only have this many. So it really, it's a very slow process at first. I'm convinced 
I mean, it was nice to get my uncommon modular armor, sure. But I'm convinced it might not be worth touching quality at all until you have yellow assemblers, because that's not that much farther in the game. And then at least you can fit four modules per machine, and that doubles your chances. So that, I'm thinking quality is best weighted until at least yellow assemblers. But of course you can start whenever you want. Um, what did I do here? <laughs> this is what happens when you stream for 11 hours, okay? Give me a break, give me a break. I'm, I'm impressed that I'm still lucid at this point. All right. Is Troopin still on Gleba, by the way? I know he's doing a 24 hour stream on Gleba. Is he still alive, like IRL? Poor guy, I feel bad for him. I'm sure some of you have multiple streams open. How's Troopin doing? <laughs> All right, uh, big power poles. So yeah, I'll just follow the squiggles here. Walk our way back up. It would have been easier to ride the rails. He's suffering, but he managed to get a stable setup of green and red circuits. Wow, good for him. Yeah, I gotta say, this night vision thing is pretty frustrating. It's, it's a relief when it turns off. And it's extremely harshly noticeable when it turns off. It's not like, like the old one, it just made everything a little more gray. So the world slowly faded between color and less color when nighttime would come. And it'd be a little darker and a little less color, uh, like faded colors. This one, it's like, oh my God, the yellow's gone. Thank goodness. That's how I feel anyway. I'm not, I'm not saying it's everybody's experience, but I certainly am not a fan. All right, here we go. Here's some iron. Um, I will, I guess, make it equal, at least into trains. I know some of you are cringing with this. Uh, but it'll work. Because a train can only hold 40 slots. So each of these would only need seven, seven slots. So if I just restrict all these to 10, that's basically fine. I have a little extra that way. Um, Those pull concerters are pretty wildly overkill. Uh, yeah, you know what I should be doing is this, and th then I save on pull concerters. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because those are enough to actually remove the red belt, but the pull concerters are needed to more quickly fill the train. I wasn't properly thinking about that uh, when I was thinking everything had to be pull concerters. boys rotate the belt after the first wagon oops yeah I didn't actually mean to do that okay and then let's grab our BP here EP of marketing. Let me guess. We're out of freaking drills. Handcrafting! I was thinking I would wrap around, but upon more thought, I think we'll just merge like normal. Assuming I have space, we do. Sweet. Sweet. 
Tweet, 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 tweet. Okay. Uh, we still need to support that corner turret if it were to get attacked by multiples. We need a couple on the bottom here, just in case. Is this enough to actually defend from large waves of biters? No, no it's not. So, could be problematic, actually. I'll put a radar here. Maybe I'll put a couple more turrets because there's enemies right there. Yeah, these cliffs are actually really nicely shaped. It, it feels easy to work with them. So I'm I'm a big fan of the new terrain generation so far. And the trees have been like not annoying. I've been able to work with them too. I had to kill a few, but that's just because I got in the way of my straight line bus. That's to be expected. Um, all right, so this is north. Iron load one. All right, and then train. Whoa. It's interesting it opens a whole map view window. That's kind of a lot, but I guess it's fine. Um, no group assigned. That's fine. You go from station to station. Empty cargo. Full cargo. And at least... No. Full cargo or at most 10 minutes. No interrupts. Let's go. Oh, no, 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 get, no! Ah! Wait for me! Damn. All right, uh, so we'll walk back to base. Walk of shame. <laughs> um, this is the walk of shame in Factorio. <laughs> When you meant to grab your train. Yeah. More like I was using the the factory train as my personal train. Is that is that embezzling? Does that count as factory embezzlement? When you're using the company train for personal use? The splat of shame is when the train grabs you. Yeah, like you're trying to get out of the train and you end up getting run over by the train you were just trying to board that's always fun all right so I'm not gonna merge with this one I might balance with it but I'm gonna have a second full belt of iron coming this way so that when the original iron one runs out we've still got two full belts of iron ore coming over here so then here yeah this is perfect so here we merge and then at that point, I kind of don't care. Half can go to iron, the other half can go to steel. Um, I don't really care which one gets prioritized. If anything, I should prioritize the train one just because, well, but then I'm making more pollution over there. So the nice thing about using this one is the pollution staying in the denser part which spreads pollution less. So maybe I do prioritize the one on the left. Um, but yeah, that should result in a bit more iron. One is to hope. Are we Do we need lane balancing going on here? Because the problem... Like a small buffer. Might be good. No. Maybe. Because the gaps are inconsistent, but it's fine. That the train can auto plan from a map through a forest is awesome. Yeah, I mean, it did deconstruct some trees along the way, I think. But it avoided... Or did it? Did it avoid all the trees? Wait. Did it just, like, magically avoid all of them? Is that why it squiggled wildly? 
No, it definitely goes through trees. Wait. Oh, I was holding... Oh, there's... I'm an idiot. I think I was holding control, which does squiggle wildly to avoid all the trees. Whoa. Um, shift is what you hold if you say, ah, screw it. I don't care about no trees. But even then, it's not... It's like... That's like shortest distance kind of thing. What I want... What's control shift do? Anything? Control shift goes through your base. <laughs> Super force build. Uh, I don't need my base. Uh, we're making way for the highway. <laughs> um, that's funny. I don't need that mining outpost anymore. Uh, so shift goes through trees. Control doesn't go through anything. And shift control goes through everything. And then we need alt, which goes at a right angle. That's my two cents anyway. All right, so we got more iron. Um, cool. Was that easier than setting up a belt? At this distance, probably not, but trains are cool, so we did it. I need to take out that base, I think. Let's go do that. We have another damage research under our belt, so it should be a little easier now. I'll even do the next one and then the next shooting speed as well. Let's go grab some more ammo. I could also start making piercing ammo. I'm not poor anymore. I have plenty of steel and iron and copper and stuff. So he says he's not poor as the belt of stone looks like a poverty, poverty town over here. Uh, let's go figure out where all our stone went. Good thing steam engines can use non-potable water. Uh, yes. I'm guessing the sludge just builds up in the boilers and some unlucky sap has to clean it out once in a while. Um, I really wish I had grabbed these at the mall. I'm out of everything. Which is a wonderful feeling to have. Ooh, look. Free mining drills. Copper's almost gone. Okay. Uh, one more. Okay, so that's it for my starter stone patch. Where is more stone? Uh-oh. Oof! We're certainly gonna want trains for that. Um... Hmm... Which one's bigger? I think this one is, but it's also more out of the way from any base. We could join that in with the rail system. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, no extra stone near my starter base. Crazy. Oh look, yellow. Everything's yellow. Ugh. Hate it. I hate I hate the yellow. I don't know if I can make it through all of Space Age with that yellow. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think I would feel too bad if if the only mod I have is one that makes that less yellow. <laughs> Revert to old-fashioned night vision. Mm, is military science... Other than that, is it running fine? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So military science is a stone pro- How much stone are we talking per pack? So each pack is five. Wow, each pack is 10 stone and five coal. That's no joke. That's no joke. All right, but I'm feeling pretty good about all this. 
Where are all these red circuits going? I feel like things over here should be backed up by now. Oh, just to... Yeah, fair enough. I guess we just finished our RoboPort stuff, and now we're working on all the electric furnaces. I think we did the math, Parley Trucker. Maybe I did the math wrong. But I think we did it right. I just think they're not all running is the problem. Because we've got eight furnaces that make 0.62 a second. Eight times 0.62. 40, yeah, yeah, I think that actually equals out to exactly what we need. Uh, if I'm, again, not mistaken, which I very well might be. So, who knows. Can I add more red circuits without breaking anything? Let's find out by just copying it. Do I have enough green circuits? Do I have enough plastic? Do I have enough cable? Nobody knows, because we're not using rate calc. <laughs> so... There's a large chance of failure. Um, here, we can at least... We can at least improve our odds slightly. By adding a few more of these in. And... Copying this. I love construction bots. Wow, that made things easier. Okay. Now my problems will certainly lie with copper and iron. Rather than other things. Okay, well, I think this is a good spot to call it an episode. The end of episode 8 for our future YouTubians. If you're here live, stick around. We'll still be streaming for a little bit here. Um... So we got a train going. We got some more projectile damage, which is good. So we can attack biters with a bit more, a bit less fear. Now the main things we're lacking is our second copper patch. So we should probably do that next. You know, one thing they don't have in the game is any way to take notes. There's no notes, there's no task list, there's no reminders. Uh, you just have to add map tags. Uh, get copper. So get copper. But see, yeah, maybe I should put all my, my to-do list tags in one place. Can't you drag these now? Yeah, shift click. There we go. So get copper. We'll just keep our to-do list over here in this, in this space. There is, there is a mod for that. I don't know if Rygard's, uh, finished it yet, but... So we need to get copper, we need to get stone. We need to get stoned. Um, I should probably grab more oil while I'm down there. More oil. Next episode is going to be all about the resources. <laughs> so we're still a little way from launching a rocket, though I do think we will launch a rocket in the next one. You could use the new text displays. The problem is that's only visible when you're zoomed in at this level, and if you have too much text, you have to mouse over it to even see the whole text. I don't think that's good for this type of uh, usage, at least. Coal, I'm actually okay on, thankfully. Everything else, not so much. All right, and then kill biters. Kill biters, so these are reminders for ourselves. You use a blank blueprint book for a to-do list? I guess that works too. But like, it's just kind of funny, like, those are janky hacks, right? Like, those aren't... They work, but it feels weird that that's what we have to do. When in Satisfactory, you know, there's just this nice thing over here that you can add text to. That's like built in. I don't know. Different design choices, certainly. But... 
I think with that, we'll call it an episode. So for those of you on YouTube from the future in episode eight, thank you as always for watching. If you'd like to support me making these videos, I'd appreciate you going over to patreon.com slash crydax and check that out. Uh, obviously, with any sort of thing that you're supporting, you should always be asking yourself if you're getting your money's worth, and that applies to my channel as well. If you feel like you'd get your money's worth out of it, please go for it. If you don't, that's totally fine. Or if you just don't have the money or don't want to spend the money. I would never pressure you to do so, and I hope no one else would either. But I do appreciate people that check that out. It helps a lot when people support, like it helps me continue making these videos. And I also have a lot of plans for like tips and tricks and walkthrough videos. Like when we get to a space platform, like I'm gonna do a, you know, basically like how to build your first space platform tips type video, things like that, that will help players who kind of get a little more bogged down in some of the big picture stuff to kind of help them at least think, here's some ways that you could do the little picture stuff. So I'm excited to do some of those types of like walkthrough videos and stuff. And all that to say, like those who support me on Patreon and through uh, subs and memberships and stuff, that's all really helpful to help me keep making those videos. So I just appreciate you guys who support me and consider supporting me. And if you're just here lurking and watching, that's great too, that is support. So thank you for being here and thank you for your support and I will see you all in the next episode.